Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about allergies, autoimmunity, and the virus that you very well know is circulating. We're gonna focus in on some new research from scientists at Yale who have actually found that some people might be more prone to make autoantibodies against various immunological tissues, which I think is really uh, kind of underscores a theme that we've been talking a lot about since March on this channel that prevention, diet, lifestyle, nutrition, everything needs to be at the forefront of the containment conversation because we're all gonna be exposed, not all, a lot of us will be exposed to this virus. It's going to be endemic in our communities. Not every single person is gonna get vaccinated tomorrow. We don't yet know if the vaccine is gonna prevent transmission. So what we want to be able to do is to prevent long-term complications, side effects, autoimmunity, allergies, is we want to ensure that our immune system is tolerant. Then we're gonna focus on this paper right here that actually found a reduced levels of T regulatory cells in people that have severe COVID outcomes. We'll talk about what these cells are and how they're linked to leptin. So this conversation, although it's gonna focus and hone in on autoimmunity and hyperinflammation, we'll define that. Really, people that have excessive body fat or belly fat, metabolic dysfunction, have reduced T regulatory cells as well, and that can be problematic. But first, I wanna welcome you back. It's Mike Mutzel, and this video is proudly brought to you by Skillshare.com, the largest online community out there. I leverage Skillshare to learn all about things like how to manage my business, how to use things like Photoshop, which I use for my Instagram, which you know, I'm not trying to brag, but I now have almost 100,000 users and I've learned how to do all my posts from using Skillshare to learn how to navigate Photoshop, how to crop things and make funny little memes and all of that sort of stuff. And you can do that too by going over to Skillshare.com. There will be links below where you can learn how to do anything from you know, finances and QuickBooks. You can learn Adobe Illustrator. You can learn how to shoot and edit videos like this yourself. So you can continue to sharpen the saw and learn new skills that can advance your career and your mind and just stay on top of your game by going over to Skillshare.com and the first 1,000 people get a membership by using the link below. So please use that link, sign up. I would highly recommend it. It's an awesome deal. And their memberships are only like $9.95 a month after this free trial. But again, it's the first 1,000 people that signed up. So please check that out and support our show sponsor. So let's get right back to it. Uh, again, these two papers are just mind blowing. I think as anyone who's concerned about preventing autoimmunity, autoimmunity, by the way, is a leading cause of death uh, in the United States. It's in, in the top 10 causes of death. Um, so let's, let's first talk about this. So um, diverse functional autoantibodies in patients with COVID-19. So what was interesting is these scientists at Yale, they did a, a bunch of complex immunological analysis that are way too detailed for this particular video about getting into the nuances. But what they were able to actually figure out is even people who had mild or asymptomatic illness had a diverse array of really strange autoantibodies that are not prevalent in the population much. And actually, if you look at this, we'll show you the color image here. Uh, for a reference, they actually looked at the autoantibodies that are prevalent in uh, a common autoimmune disease called lupus. And they found that the antibodies, even in severe illness, there was a higher prevalence of antibodies compared to lupus in people who had severe COVID-19. So I think this is really important stuff because what we all could and should be doing now is eating fermented foods, eating a low antigenic diet, getting the wheat and the processed dairy out of the diet, things that, that will increase intestinal permeability or cause leaky gut that could exacerbate autoimmune-like illness if we get exposed and infected with this virus because there's something to do with this virus, how it affects your immune system, the tolerance of your immune system that we're gonna get into in a moment, but really important that we just understand that we probably will get exposed to this at some point. It might be a year down the line, maybe you'll never get exposed to it, which would be great, but we want to prevent long-lasting complications. You don't want to exacerbate an underlying allergies or autoimmune disease. So scientists at Yale, just to summarize, found that even in mild cases, there was an increase in autoimmune-like antibodies that were totally different than what is normally found even in autoimmune disease. Now these will largely go away in some people, but this could be why people that have allergies, people that have intestinal permeability, people that already have pre-existing autoimmunity and they get exposed to this virus, why they may have long-term symptoms because they already have a you know, hyper-inflammatory immune system that then is, is sort of triggered. So you wanna do everything in your power right now, and we're gonna get into the specifics, 
getting your mic micronutrients like vitamin A, vitamin D, really good for supporting the T regulatory cells. We're going to talk about this paper. Getting your leptin down, so intermittent fasting. We've done many videos on this. Cold thermogenesis, uh, mindfulness-based meditation practices, stress reduction, exercise, eating a low antigenic diet, so something like a keto diet, a carnivorous diet. All of these things, uh, you know, if you do all of these lifestyle strategies, you can you know, there's no guarantee, but you can really reduce the chances of developing complications. And so complications meaning allergies, autoimmunity, but also potential long-term issues with this virus. Now, let's get into this paper. Really fascinating. Now, this connects the dots between metabolic inflammation, having excessive belly fat, leptin, and the immune system. So as many of you have heard in the media, we know that obesity is one of the most common comorbidities or pre-existing conditions that are linked with poor outcomes when it comes to the coronavirus. We know, well, what's, what's a common future with obesity? Well, we have elevated levels of leptin because we know that, that fat cells release leptin. Leptin drives inflammation. And then we also have a higher level of inflammation, probably some insulin resistance. Well, what does leptin do to the immune system? Leptin creates a pro-inflammatory state by reducing your T regulatory cells. So if you envision within your immune system, you have good guys and bad guys. You have you know cops and robbers, so to speak. Well, the policemen of your immune system that are preventing autoimmunity and, and hyperinflammation are called T regulatory cells. They're a type, a subtype of your T lymphocytes that help to prevent chronic inflammation. Now they can help to resolve inflammation because one of the key features about severe outcomes when it comes to this virus is a hyper-inflammatory type state where people get exposed, they get infected, the immune system doesn't initially recognize and doesn't mount an early initial robust response. And then once the viral load has increased past a critical threshold, your immune system basically freaks out and creates this hyper-inflammatory state. There's a lot of collateral damage from this, your own immune system, right? Normally, your T regulatory cells would prevent that, that over-exuberant immunological response, but for some people, because they're overweight, because they're chronically inflamed, they have high leptin, and they have a dearth or lack of T regulatory cells, this tolerance, this, this ability to tame down the over-exuberant immune system is not there, okay? So what these scientists found is there is a dearth of these T regulatory cells in severe patients compared to, to non-hospitalized patients. So again, it's kind of interesting. It comes back to your own immune system's response. The virus is not different. It's, I mean, yeah, there's strains and there's new mutations, but what's, what's kind of bifurcating mild asymptomatic illness versus severe outcomes is your own immune system's response. And so therein lies the blessing because we have control. Now, you, yeah, you might be predisposed genetically to autoimmunity, but you have control over your thoughts, you have control over your exercise, you have control over your sleep, you have control over you know, uh, uh, cold showers, uh, you know, going in a sauna, doing all these things. You have control over the ability to make your immune system less reactive, to increase the, the functionality of the T regulatory cells by reducing body fat through exercise, intermittent fasting, not eating processed food. So again, same virus, different immunological response based upon your lifestyle choices. That is the message that we need to be sending out to people because this is what the science is clearly showing us, uh, what, what is going on here. So again, just to kind of summarize uh, the connection between metabolic inflammation and leptin. Leptin suppresses the activity of your T regulatory cells. This is why people that have obesity, tend to have higher prevalences of cancer. The T regulatory cells are involved in, in cancer surveillance and affecting the immune system there. People with obesity tend to have more allergies and asthma. People with obesity tend to have more autoimmune diseases. It, it comes back to the, the immunological shift, and, and part of that is leptin-induced downregulation of the T regulatory cells. And as this new paper just found, I think this was November 25th, this was hot off the press brand new, I think about a week ago in January, this paper at Yale. But this to me was, was super exciting, just connecting the dots. And con again, connecting the dots between your diet life and lifestyle choices, your meal patterns, your feeding fasting window, your sleep, all of these things, the, the power is, you're, you're in the driver's seat of your own health. 
and we should be striving to make better lifestyle choices right now. So uh, hopefully you found some of this research sort of interesting. Uh, again, this paper, I would highly recommend downloading it. Diverse Functional Autoantibodies in Patients with COVID-19. Fascinating paper. If you know someone with autoimmunity right now or allergies, they need to, to read this and they need to start acting now to reduce their level of inflammation because I don't know what the long-term ramifications are of making a lot of autoantibodies to novel immunological tissues in your body. Like we, no one knows. And you don't want to be, you don't want to be the person that, that suffers the consequences of that. So get rid of the processed food, get rid of the wheat, get rid of the antigens in your diet, the oxalates, you know, things that are causing intestinal permeability, which by the way, there were there was a recent study that showed that gut permeability and gut dysbiosis is linked with poor COVID outcomes as well. So it's all coming back to the gut, the gut immune system, and your metabolic flexibility. Thanks for watching all the way through. Please sign up over at Skillshare on the link below. And remember the first 1,000 people that sign up get a free membership for a trial membership. And then after that, it's, it's less than 10 bucks a month to continue on. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll put links to the references and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.